Don't you love that? There you go. <laughs> now then, let's get this. Oh, okie doke. everybody. Um, so first of all, just to let you know, there's the real sitch. The real sitch is I'm wearing hearing aids and I find this place very echoey, okay? Super echoey. So you're going to have to excuse me if I don't understand the questions, all right? And you'll just have to keep the, the, the background noises to the minimum because I'm, it, I'm just like, otherwise I can't figure it out. I'm so sorry, what? You can't hear me. What do I hear? Microphone. That microphone You would like me to just to speak up. Well, how about you come and sit close? Could you come and speak? Please. Yeah. When we can't hear, come and sit closer. Thank you. Yeah. Come and sit closer, and then it'll be easier. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So. Those of you who've been studying with me in the past know that I like to start off the Shi'or with a with a prayer. Okay, and this prayer has been written by the Yari, it's, it's, it's written in some of the books. Okay, and uh, so we're going to dedicate the learning today, Lunishmat Rina. Okay, now unfortunately, and unfortunately, um, I don't know her Hebrew name. We've asked around and we don't actually know her Hebrew name, but we all know who we mean. Okay. So, Rina Cohen, who worked in Ascent and who's a beloved member of the community. And so, we're going to dedicate the learning for her today. Okay. Now, the prayer that I'm going to say, I'll say it first in Hebrew and then I'll say it in English. All right. And it's going to be so that we have a cover now, we have an intention for our learning. All right, because our learning should not be something which is just information. It's got to be an action. Our learning needs to be an action that we bring the the, the, chokma, the, the wisdom, which our, our sages have taught us, and then we transform it, okay, through our learning, through our listening, and through our prayers that we bring it forwards into transformation. Okay, so this is the actual work that we do. Yeah. A bit louder? Yeah. Okay, this is a very strange room. It's very echoey. And, yeah. And, yeah, and at the same time, you can't hear me. How about if I was to stand up? Would that be better? Yeah? Oops. I have to change this somehow. Oh, I can do that. There you go. All right, so if I stand up, maybe that's easier. Okay, you're welcome. And somebody can just pour me a glass of water. Thank you so much. Rebo no lamin, but a never lean. Abra Haman was he hot. Modima Nathan le Fanefa, at a nine or hang of now between me. The Kidabish da Havaya, Shakaratono le Tot, Ha, or Lavadu Av Gasa Kodesh. When I tatala no Helek, the Sodot was Sahakosha, Ma Anu Ume Hayelu, Asher Asita Imanu, Hesed Gado Kuze, Alkane Anahnu Mapilim Tahnunenu le Faneha, Shatimahol the Tislach, the Paul Hatotenu Avanutenu, while you Avanutenu Mapilim Benenu Beneha. Thank you. 
אשר על ידם גלית את דברי האלה בעולם, וזכותם, וזכות אבותם, וזכות תורתם ותמימותם וקדושתם, יעמוד לנו לבן מקשר בדברים אלו, ובזכותם תראה עינינו במה שאנו לומדים, כמה מענאים זמירות ישראל, גל עיניי ואביץ הנפלאות מתורתך, כי אדוני ייתן חוכמה מפי דעת ובונה, יהיו נאות צונים מפי, וגם מבפניך, אדוני צורי וגורלי. Master of the universe and Lord of Lords, Father of mercy and forgiveness, we give thanks before you, O Lord our God and God of our fathers, in bowing our head and prostrating ourselves, that you brought us close to your Torah and to your service, the holiest of services, and you've given us a portion of the inner meanings of your holy Torah. What are we and what is our life that you've dealt with us such a great loving kindness as this? Therefore, we lay our supplication before you that you pardon and forgive all our sins and iniquities and do not let our iniquities separate us from you. And may it be your will, O Lord, our God, and God of our fathers, that you prepare our hearts to have reverence of you and love of you. And may your ears listen to these, our words. Open our uncircumcised hearts in the inner meanings of your Torah and let this, and let this learning give pleasure before the throne of your glory as a sweet smelling fragrance. Bestow upon us the light of the source of our soul in all its aspects. May the sparks of your holy servant, to whom you revealed these your words into the world, shine forth. And may their merit and the merit of their fathers, the merit of their Torah, their wholeness and holiness, stand by us that we do not stumble in these words. And through their merit, enlighten our eyes in what we are learning. As the sweet singer of Israel said, open my eyes and I will look on the wonders of your Torah. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, knowledge and understanding. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Now, I just want to get my clock. I have my clock here. I want to be sure to end on time because you've all got, for those people who want to go to the funeral. All right, so there we go. So what we're going to be learning today is we're going to be learning the most amazing piece that I think in the Zohar which is about tshuva. It's called the article of tshuva, all right? Now, tshuva as such isn't really mentioned in the, um, in the Torah, all right? In fact, you've got one verse, basically, which sort of mentions it, all right? And that's in Bamidbar. Um, yes, so if you turn to the paper of the, of the um, uh, sources, Okay, this is where we first, where we get the idea of Chuba written. By Daber Hashem and Moshe Lemo. Daber el Bene Israel ish oisha, ki asumi kol hatot adam, lim ol mal vashem, vashma nefeshahi. Vid vanduit hatam ashasu, veshiv ashamo brosho, hamishuto yosif alav and matan vashem ashamo. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Tell the children of Israel, when a man or woman commits any of the sins against man to act treacherously against God, and that person is found guilty, they shall confess the sin they committed and make restitution for the principal amount of his guilt. And here it goes into if it's a theft, all right? In which case he would add a fifth to whatever he needs to give back and give it to the one against whom he was guilty. And all our laws of tshuva actually <coughs> stem from this one sentence, which is really remarkable, okay? So the idea, the essence of tshuva is confession, all right, to, to uh, be, to, to acknowledge what we've done. And yet, although it seems to me just a very simple, simple idea, I'm sorry I did wrong, whatever it is, okay? It has incredible power. And here in the article we're going to learn from the Zohar, which is called Ma'amara Chuba, what we're actually going to discover is the trajectory of Chuva. That Chuva has a power that affects not only ourselves, but our descendants. It affects, it corrects what we did in the past, and it corrects and affects the higher worlds and the lower worlds. The, the Midrash says that before God created the world, he created Tshuva, all right, because the angels complained and they said, don't you know this man who you're planning to create is going to annoy you? 
okay? He's going, he's, he's going to cause, he's going to sin, he's going to annoy you. And, and, uh, and, and God says, well, how else will you discover that I'm not a muhanun, that I'm, I'm merciful and gracious, that I'm er chapayim, that I'm long suffering, okay? And uh, so, and, and before the world was created, he created Shuva, he created the possibility of coming back, okay? And what is Tshuva in the language of the Zohar? It is Tashuv Hey, okay? Because God's full name is Yud Hey Val Hey, all right? And we are part of the Malchut. The Malchut is the Shekhinah, the collective soul of Israel, okay? Every single person, every single person on the planet is part of the Shekhinah, of, of, the, of the collective soul, okay? And that, but also past and future, all of us together make up the Shekhinah. Why the, this is why the Shekhinah is also called Knesset Israel. So every single person is important. Every single one has the, uh, the role, particular role that they alone uniquely can play, can play in this. All right. And the Malchut is, is, if you have the four letter name of God, you have Yud is Chokhmah, Hey is Bina, Vav is Tiferet, and the Malchut is the last Hey. Okay. And what happens? It's kind of like when we're acting against Torah and Mitzvot, against the soul, against the Shekhinah, it's kind of like the Malchut drops off. It's like, it's like it got separated from the other three letters. And our role as, as members of the Shekhinah, members of the Knesset Israel, is to restore the hay. And we do this within ourselves, and we do it as part of the collective. Okay? So each one of us has a role to play. Okay? And we're going to first look, and the first thing that the Zohar brings here, I think it's amazing, is what I call the trajectory of tshuva. How far does tshuva really take us? Okay? So this is what we're going to learn. So if we look on the page, let's just get orientated on the page. Those of you who've got the... Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. All right, I've also put it on my um, Google Drive, if anybody wants the link or something. Okay, so let's just get orientated, those of you who've got the resources. This is a page of the Zohar, okay, as it's set out in the writings of Rabbi Ashraq. You've got the actual Zohar on the top in Aramaic, okay? Then you've got references, which are very useful, all right, in the middle. And underneath, in two columns, you've got the um, commentary and translation of Rabbi Ashraq. He translated the Aramaic into Hebrew and added a few words of commentary to help orientate us as to what's going on, okay? So, take we can start at the top of the page. Ish or Isha? I'm just going to read our make, then we'll, then we'll learn from the people. It's much easier. Tahazin, Ketiv, Vahave Hakeni, Mifrad Mikhaim, Mibne Kobe, Koten Moshe Gome, Vahave Hakeni, Mibne Banoi, Mitohava, Kamosha Katu, Vyoma Shaul, Elakeni, Mugome, Amai Kai Kaini, Vaha Ukmuha, Viktiv Hakeni, Vetakenizi, Vitamad Avad Kana Bamidba, Okay, now we're going to go to the people much easier. All right. So Isha he's looking, he's looking at that sentence. Okay. So the Zohar is looking at that sentence of Chuva, the one that we just read. Okay, in Bamidva. And he says, Bo'a, come and see. It's written, that Hava Hakeni, okay, was separate, separated himself from pain, and he was from the children of Hovev Koten Moshe. Where is this from? This is from the story of Devorah and Sisera, okay? You remember the story that they were fighting Sisera, okay? Devorah and Barak, and they had to fight Sisera, and then they, Barak defeated the armed army, and Sisera ran away. Okay, and who did he run to? He ran past the tent of uh, of Hevre Hakeni. All right, he was one of the, the grandchildren, great grandchildren, I suppose, or whatever, of, of Yitro. 
okay? And it was his wife, Yael, who did the deed and, and killed Sisera, okay? So he's saying here something very interesting. He said, Peva Cain separated himself from Cain, although he was one of the children of Cain, all right, and therefore was clinging to idol worship, all right? Nevertheless, he separated himself from that, and he was one of the grandchildren of Hovez, the, the, uh, the uh, father-in-law of Moses, okay? He was one of the, it says one of the grandchildren of Israel, okay? And therefore he had within him to do a deed to save Israel, all right? Likewise, another story, and again, a little story within the story, this is the time of Shaul, and the time of Shaul Amelech, and he, Shaul has been told he has to go and fight the Amalekites. All right, and uh, you know the story; he doesn't quite do it, and whatever. But before he actually went to battle, he noticed that that, that uh, one of the descendants of Yitro, a king, was was actually parked at his tent right where the battle was going to take place. So he remembered the kindness that Yitro had done with Moshe and that he was Jose Bichuva. And so therefore he took care before the battle to move to tell uh, whatever his name was, Hakeli, the descendant, to move his tent and get out of the way so he wouldn't be harmed. Okay. Okay. The Kva, and then he goes on to say, Kvai Madu Rodinat, the Katu was at the Eta Kane, Veta Kinizi, that God drove out the Kane and Kinizi from Eretz Israel. The Lamadu, Shasa Ken Bamibala Sukutuak no Ophuze, and he flushed me that even if I'd retain. But what did Yitro do? He made like a nest in the wilderness in which he can occupy himself with Torah like a bird. And he separated himself from the city. He separated himself from Cain. He separated himself from all the tribe which were following the Avodazara. Okay. And he and he clung to God. Okay. So all this happened because Yitro did tshuva. So just think about it for a minute. Yitro did tshuva. He was a, a, a Kohen of the a priests of Midian, oh. all right? He did a, and we're talking about Shaul. I don't know how many generations this, this is. I mean, I didn't sit down and work it out. But it's a lot of generations, okay? So here we see that his descendants absolutely left the, 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 the ways of their tribe, left their culture, left the surrounding prevailing culture, and clung to the ways of God all those generations later. And I'm like, wow, just see the trajectory of Chuva. You know, we've all got things we regret in our lives. And certainly if I could, you know, run the clock backwards, I would do some things differently, mm -hmm. okay? I think we all would, okay? When we get to a certain age, we look back, we... But think what Shuva does. Maybe, maybe Yitro also said to himself, I wish I could have done things differently. But he did what he could at the time he could and just see where that trajectory led him, led his descendants. Amazing. I'm thinking this is just a, such a powerful piece of Zohar. And the Zohar goes on. Ashra, I'll just read the Hebrew now that we've connected with the Aramaic because otherwise we'll be here for a long time. Ashrei ha'adam, happy is the man, shazachah v'torah, who merited in Torah, lelechet ulidabek v'torachaz, to go and cling to its ways. Kikshadam olech v'darkei ha'torah, when a person goes in the ways of Torah, Moshe halav roch kor kadosh elion, God draws to him a high, holy spirit, a spirit from, from, from holiness, from on high. Until uh, it happens upon us, the spirit from on high. 
וכשאדם מרצה את רחב מן התורה, but God forbids, if a person leans his ways away from Torah, מושך עליו רוח אחר, מצד אחר. Well, then he draws to himself a different spirit from the other side, שהוא צד הטומאה, which is the side of uncleanness. וצד הטומאה מתעורר מצד הנקב של תחום גדול, and this uh, um, side of uncleanness awakens, now this words here, נקב של תחום גדול, basically means the great field of egoism, all right, putting it into ordinary language. All of us have two sides of us. We have the Yetzir HaTov, the good inclination which relates to the soul within us, and we also have the Yetzir Hara, the evil inclination, which we're given as part of our nature and which we're given in order to work with, to transform, okay? And that the Yetzir Hara, Rav Ashlag describes as the will to receive oneself alone. It's the tendency to <coughs> egoism. It's the tendency for selfish love, to wanting to receive for myself alone without consideration of anybody else, okay? That's what the Yetzara, the nature of the Yetzara really is. And when we were to take, if we were to take, you know, all those Yetzaras and put them together, we get a framework because they, they're synergistic and they add up to each other, just as we, we, we formed the Knesset Israel. So the other side's also got its own framework where it, it, its synergistic action adds up together. And this is called the Tahoma Gadol, the, the great death. Where in the consciousness, there is a, a consciousness in which dwell the negative energies which cause damage to human beings. And these called, are called the damages of the damages of our consciousness, the damages of our energy. Okay. And these are drawn from, the origin comes from Cain. All right. Why Cain? Because Cain, and the Zohar tells us that if you were to look at Cain and Abel, the two brothers who were uh, the, the children of Adam and, and, and Hava, Cain unfortunately got the portion of the snake. All right, but when they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the poison ideas of the snake, which is the real will to receive ourselves alone, went into their bodies because that's what happens when you eat something, it goes in, all right, becomes part of your makeup. Mm -hmm. And Cain is, is actually portrayed in the Zohar as actually receiving like the big portion of the will to receive oneself alone, the snake, all right. Does that mean to say he was a bad person? He wasn't, okay? He was, but he had huge energies within him, which he didn't know how to handle. All right. Well, the Torah hadn't yet been given, okay? But the now, all right. But the now that the Torah has been given, we've got guidance. And so let's, and now the Zohar goes on and explains more specifically the a story of Yitro, because Yitro is an example of somebody who was a descendant of Cain, okay, he grew up in this culture of will to receive oneself alone, worshipping idols, the culture of what I call the snake, okay, all right, but he changed. So it's an amazing example of Tshuva. Yitro, the Kagameta Kumara. La Olama Le Orodazar. Yitro, that's uh, paragraph 18, you'd read. Yitro, in the beginning, was a Komer, a, a priest of Avodazara. Ulatadahu Haya Oved, and he used to work for that side, for the side of the negative, for the side of the anti, the, the anti, anti Hashem, all right? Umashahalab Ruach Mel Tortsan, and he brought. Uh, the, the, the energy from that side. And that's why he was called Kaini, because he was connected with the ideas and culture of Kaini. But then he left Kaini, he was separated from Kaini, and clung to Hakodosh Borku. Because whoever clings to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, 
and does the mitzvot of the Torah, it is if he is upholding all the worlds. Olam shalomala, the spiritual worlds, okay, but olam shalomata, and the worlds which are of the higher worlds and the lower worlds. What does a higher world and a lower world mean? Okay. I know it's very easy in our imaginations to sort of think about a world as being sort of something up there in space, you know, something vertical. You know? And I can't help it when I, you know, when I teach, you know, I go like that. <laughs> but of course, that's not what it means at all. All right. The higher worlds are, are actually consciousnesses within us. That's what a world is. All right. So we have the, the, the consciousness that we're familiar with, more physical consciousness, which is the outer one, okay, the more accessible. But as we go inner and inner and inner and inner through the ways of Torah, we actually get um, more and more and more connected with the worlds within us. And I think this is really interesting because it really teaches us a lot about the great teachings of the Zohar and and uh, the the, uh, and the the holy Ari, what he what they actually brought, and many times you find, for example, in the Zohar, things which seemingly contradict each other. You know that one word here means this, and the same word over there means that. Why do they mean two different things? Okay, and the answer is is that it's a description. Imagine somebody in a deep meditation going deeply, deeply, deeply within and having the ability to describe what he sees, okay? And this is actually what the great rabbis, the sages are doing. They are describing their, their own perception of the spiritual worlds which are manifest within themselves. And because they are so pure, and they have such pure vessels, they have pure, clear um, abilities to be able to do this. And this also explains to us why the great Sadiqim also use different language. If you read, uh, for example, Rabbi Nachman, um, you'll get the same ideas, absolutely the same ideas, but in different language. And if you read the Tanya, you'll get the same ideas, but in different language. All right, why? Because each Sadiq has to use his own descriptive powers in order to describe what he is actually seeing within him. And this is what we mean by the spiritual worlds, all right? So people ask me sometimes, well, you know, I'm not a tzaddik. Um, how do we connect with the spiritual worlds? Okay, it's a very good question. And the answer is through the tefillah. The tefillah is arranged, all right, um, exactly by the Al-Sheikh Nesat as a as like a ladder through which we can actually ascend in our consciousness. Guide, it's like a guided meditation for all of us to use through the spiritual worlds in which we can connect with Hashem at the different levels. And in fact, if you open a Svadi Siddha, you can actually find it very easily because the Svadi Siddha has more of the Kabbalah actually left in it and you can find it quite easily. So you have, for example, um, uh, from the Korbanot and uh, uh, and Tuk and Zimra are in the Olam of Asiya. And then from Baruch Shalma to the end of Ishtabach is the Olam Yitzira. And then the, the Bahot before the Shema and the Shema itself um, until Ga'al Yisrael is Bri'a. And then the world of Atsilut is in the consciousness, uh, uh, is, is the Amida. And then the parts going back uh, uh, following the Amida is also kind of like a descent going from uh, Atsilut to Bri'a to Yitzira mm. to Asiya, and you finish with the you know, Alain and Shaber. And um, so we also have access, even at our level, to these spiritual worlds. Mm. And the cleaner we get in our Torah mitzvot, and the more pure we get in our intentions, the more we'll find, you know that the word of God comes to us in different ways because each person's individual and we'll find God actually speaks to us. And we're going to look at that in one of the um, classes, uh, in, hopefully, in, that, we'll be, that we'll be looking at uh, later on. Okay. So he says here, 
whoever clings to Hakadosh Baruch Hu and does the mitzvahs of the Torah, it is if he is upholding the spiritual world. Amazing. Okay, of course, not just your own. It's it's the Shekhinah. We're talking about the Shekhinah. We're talking about the collective together. All right. So if each one of us does our part, we are together upholding the spiritual world within each one of us. The world above, the world below. And as we have established it, the Asi Temple Tam, and you are actually making them. Again, like if you really look at the Zohar, you're like, making the world? What does this mean? All right. So I was like, you know, rocked back on my heels at that sentence and I said, Okay, so I went, I, I went to look to see what was written there. So I went to, uh, uh, yeah, it's the very, very last page, okay? And it's a piece from Okupotan, okay? So the very, very last page of the book, all right? And uh, it was um, actually the last paragraph on the page so I didn't want um, uh, 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 to, for you guys to, 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 to spend an extra page printing things out because I, so I, I, I cut it up and stuck it all together because I know what it's like you know, when you have to walk out my own for this thing. All right. So your text, okay, uh, your text is asked here down the main, <laughs> okay, and carries on underneath at the bottom there and the um, Hebrew is that last paragraph there, you text, the second column there, and the very bottom there. So I'll read the Aramaic so we don't all get lost. Vasitimotam, my Vasitimotam, Kevanta Amar Telehu, Vatishmaru, and my Vasitim, Elaman David Pikude, or I have a Zilbo or Hoy, Kiverhol, Kilo Avele, Amar Kuchibu, Kilo Asani. So if you look at the Hebrew, it's the very last paragraph on the second column. There you go. All right there. All right. Vasitem Otam. And you shall do them. And he says, well, wait a minute. He says, what's the force of doing them? It's already told us we should walk in those ways. It's already told us and you should keep them as well. What does it mean that you shall do them? Surely that's included in walking in those ways and keeping them. What is what's the extra word and you shall do them about? And he answers, but whoever does the mitzvot of the Torah and walks in those ways, it's as if he's making God above. Okay, as if he is making me, they me do, and uh, he established it. So he, and you shall do them for a, a rule and ordinance, which relates to the two spirits. which relates to the two spirits. So I'm going to mark it, we won't go into that technically. And you shall do them. It's written for sure. Because when you do them, what are we doing? We're joining HaKadosh Baruch with the Shekhinah. That's what we're doing. We're opening up the Shekhinah in affinity of form with God, and then HaKadosh Baruch can shine his light. This is what's called the Zivug of HaKadosh Baruch with the Shekhinah. All right, the meeting of HaKadosh Baruch Hu with the, the Shekhinah itself. This is what happens when we do the mitzvah, okay? And says, well, I mean, there's an extraordinary thing when he says, it's as if you are making me. How can we make him God? We're making his presence manifest in the world. And here I want to add a word because I did not know Lina personally, or maybe I did, but I don't remember. Um, but I read the lovely things that people wrote about her. And I think that when people greet people as nicely as she obviously did and make people welcome and show a, a smiling face to them, they are making God's presence manifest in the world. That's what it means to make God, all right? To make God's presence manifest. 
So when we learn Torah, when we greet somebody kindly, when we open our house, when we give somebody a smile in the supermarket who's looking miserable, when we let somebody else go in front of us, even when we're in a hurry, this is actually making God manifest in the world. And this is what he's saying here. I mean, I know that the language of the Zohar is sort of very kind of technical and difficult, but when you really look at it, it's telling us some very important things, very beautiful things. And they seem simple, but they're not. I think that they're actually very deep. To actually write, I mean, I think this is very bold language, you know, to actually say you are if you are, as if you are making me. That's very bold language. It's very incredible. Very beautiful. All right. So, okay. All right. You're ten. Everybody okay so far? Has anybody got any questions? Yeah, how would you define the Shekhinah in this case? The Shekhinah, like okay, it's a good question. The Shekhinah is, is, is like... Consciousness? Yeah. Oh. It's, it's, it's like God's light is all his goodness, okay? But for us to, to actually receive his goodness, we've got to want it, all right? So the vessel, is, the Shekhinah is, is God manifesting as the vessel, okay? So it has, the light has got a place to go. What do I mean by this? It means that I can stand here and give a shiur, all right? But if nobody's interested, I can put out all the shiur, I can give the most beautiful shiur in, in the world, all right? And be like water off a duck's back, all right? And, and that's the reality, okay? God can give, give us all his goodness. But if we are not interested in receiving it or actually ready to receive it, then there is like nobody there, all right? So very often we say, where is God? Okay, surely it's written, his glory fills the whole world. And here am I suffering, where, where, you know, what's going on here? All right, and the answer is, it's not that God's not giving to us, he's giving to us plenty. It's just that we're not making the right vessel, okay? So when the Shekhinah is ready and willing and prepared to receive the light, you have the relationship of the Hakodesh Boku and the Shekhinah all lined up and the light flows. Okay, beautiful. But if you have the vessel, which is what we make, and we've somehow or other got lost or turned our backs or got a bit deaf or whatever it is, okay, and got involved with sins or whatever, okay, it's as if we've turned our back. It's like God is giving us the light, but there's no vessel. All right, and this is called Hashchina be the Afra, the, the Shekhinah in the dust. Okay, so what is our role? To raise the Shekhina up. Okay, and that we do by tshuva. That's what we're actually doing. When we when we do tshuva, we're restoring the Shekhinah to its right place. We're restoring the correct vessel with which to receive the light of God. We also see this actually in this last uh, parasha that we had. Okay, where you have the Yigash Yehuda, El Yosef, right? So Yehuda, who's Yehuda? Yehuda is the Malkut. So the Malkut is the symbol, is the aspect of the Shekhinah. The Zohar teaches that Yehuda is here representing the Shekhinah. And Yosef is representing HaKadosh Baruch Hu, okay? And up till now, Yosef's light has been blocked. Okay, can't shine his light out into the world because the vessel all the brothers who are involved with the, with the selling of Yosef. There's nobody there to talk to. What do we do? When did everything turn around? It turned around because Yehuda told Yosef, I am a rave for Benjamin. I'm putting myself in Benjamin's stead. I am giving up my own desires and I'm working to help somebody else. The moment he was in affinity of form, then Yosef could no longer refrain and the light pours in, okay? So again, you know, this, this theme of the Shekhinah being the collective ready vessel, ready for the, the light of God to come in is something that we see. Once you begin to see it, you see it everywhere, all right? So very good question, thank you. All right, you're Ted. Shall we keep going? 
כביכול, פגים לאלה, פגים לצחס. פגים לגמרי, פגים בכל עוני. מצא לי נון מפרח חושי ימין, דשתי בערבי, קם חד שתי הביניים הוא, בא לנק כבר בכל זאת. אולייט, let's have a look and see what's happening in your text. Whoever transgresses the commandment of the Torah is as if he's causing a defect above, a defect below, he's hurting himself, he's hurting all the worlds. What is this like? It's like a person who's gone on board a, a ship and the ship is sailing on the sea, all right? And one idiot gets up, he's called an idiot here in the, in the short term, okay? He's called an idiot, gets up amongst them, and he wants to drill a hole under his seat. Okay, it's a famous uh, mashal. And his friend says to him, why are you drilling this hole? And he said to him, what do you care? I'm only drilling a hole under my seat. Okay. And he said to him, don't you realize that both of us will drown in the same boat? Okay. So what this is telling us is that when we have, we're going to do a sin, all right, we all do it, okay? And then the thought comes in, oh, it doesn't really matter, that's just once, whatever. It does matter. It's like we're drilling a hole in the boat. It does matter because it matters not just to us, but it matters to everybody else. If we can remember that, that's the moment it helps us stop. Now, why do we sin? We sin because of our nature, because God built them in us a yetzer Okay, there's no point dossing over it and pretending we don't have it. We all have it, okay? So we have the Yates of Hamat, and it comes out in different ways. Everybody's got their own particular uh, peckola to deal with, all right? But one of the things we need to remember, if we, uh, it's, it's like we're drilling a hole under the seat in the boat, okay? And that is not, uh, it's not helpful for everybody else in the boat, okay? Well, that goes on to uh, paragraph 20. Okay. When they do, okay, so therefore, when a, a person does something of everything that a man, a dumb, does, all right? So, what is that, uh, that man, a dumb? What's he talking about, a dumb? So first he says an ish, and then he says an isha, and then he says the word a dumb. Why suddenly a dumb? And he says, well, actually, we're talking about the first Adam. All right, because the first Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge when they were specifically told not to. All right, and that is the origin of the Yetzirah. Now, I'm not blaming Adam and Eve because honestly, truthfully, all the commentaries that you read from Rabbi Ashlag is that it was meant to happen that way and God made it that way and it was purposeful that way and it was meant to be that way. Okay, nevertheless, as all of us are part of the one soul of Adam, I was talking to a friend yesterday and we agreed, it might not be our fault, but it is our responsibility. Okay, all right, so it's not our fault. Whatever bit of the HLR we have within us, okay, is not our fault. Nevertheless, once the moment we discover it, it is our responsibility. Okay, so here it's hinting about. Adam Rishon. This is the origin of all the sins come from the one sin of Adam Rishon. Who transgressed the one commandment of the Torah. He caused himself mortality because originally he was meant to live forever. Okay. And also caused for all the, for all the world a defect both above and below. It's like the guy who drills a hole under the boat, uh, in the boat, okay? And this sin is still outstanding. Until God will one day, through all our collective efforts, will restore the world as it was in the beginning. And then this defect will pass away from the consciousness of the world. Now that's an amazing thing because not talking about that he'll make the world anew, but the consciousness of the sin, the effect, the energetic effect that that sin has on all of us will, 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 will change. And the consciousness of the world will change. 
וזה שכתוב בלה המוות לנצח. And this is what it means that death is, 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 will be uh, swallowed up forever. It doesn't mean that everybody will suddenly live forever. It, that's not what it means. It means that the, the, the awareness of separation, of separation from God, which in the Kabbalah is termed death, okay, because it's disconnection from the life of all lives, okay, so that will be swallowed up. No longer will we be able to act in a way which is completely um, separated from the life of all lives. We won't be able to do that. We will want to be connected with God. Okay. And God will wipe away the tears from all faces. Okay, because the real sorrow is the disconnection from God. That's the real sorrow. It's when we feel disconnected from ourselves, from our inner selves. That's the real sorrow, but it which is inside all the sin. And therefore, if we were to look on the on the, on the uh, sources, when it says, when a person does, and uh, on verse six, Isha Isha, Kiasu Mikol Hatot Adam, when a man or woman does any of the sin of Adam, okay, it means any aspect which is the source was in the original sin of Adam, which is all that followed from it. Is a yet sahara, okay? That that's what it means. So any aspect which follows from the sin of the eating of the tree of knowledge, which is the bringing within ourselves the will to receive for ourselves alone, we get to Adam, which hints about Adam al shown. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to do one more. And then I think that today, I think that the right thing to do is to stop before we carry on, um, because I, I don't want anybody to feel they're in a hurry and they want to get to the funeral or whatever. So I think we'll just do one last paragraph to finish up, okay? And then we will uh, uh, do that and say that was a good piece of learning. All right? So, Kafalev. Limor mal ma'al bet Hashem. Okay. So somebody who, who leaves the path of righteousness, he leaves the path of the positive, and he goes and sins, okay, he does cause a defect, okay, um, both above and below, we looked at that. So therefore, maybe all merciful uh, uh, merit to, uh, that we should merit to, to, that he should deliver us. From the wicked of this world, and from the uh, defect of theirs. And I will say, you know, for me, I wouldn't say I'm looking over there to the to 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 the Russia out there. I would like I would like to make that into a personal prayer. I would like to say, you know, every single person is a world in himself. Okay, so I have within me, I have the tzaddik and I have the Russia. Okay, like um, uh, 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 somebody I forget said, you know, each one of us within ourselves is a symbol. Tzaddik, Benoni, and Russia. We have within us all three, okay? All right? So I don't want my Russia, which is within me, to drive away my Tzaddik, okay? And this is one of my prayers. I say, okay, God, I've got the Russia within me. All right, please save me from the Russia within me. Okay, that's, this is what I would look at this piece of Zohar was saying. Okay, not projecting it out there, okay, there's the Tzadik King, there's the Shayim, but taking it all within ourselves, okay, and say, okay, this is what way you've created me, I've got all, all three levels within me, please don't let the Rasha within me drive away the Tzadik King, all right, okay, all right, so this is what I would finish today with, all right, we'll wrap it up, okay, and Rezat Hashem will carry on next week.
Aye. Okay, very good. Okay, look. 